game. So the big news announced moments ago. The trade between the Braves and Phillies has gone official. Matt Kemp was seen shaking hands in the Padres dugout. Here are his numbers over the last two seasons with the San Diego Padres. And as we all know, for the last couple of years, the Braves have been an offensive starved club with not a lot of power. I would assume, John Hart, that Matt Kemp is going to address that as soon as he puts on a Braves uniform. Well, we, we, we feel that way. Uh, you know, this is, um, uh, it's difficult to find a power and uh, you know, I, I think a part of it, you look at the trade deadline, and uh, and obviously we've been active in the deadline. We've, we've moved guys that we were short-term guys. We've looked for prospects. We've continued with our plan. Uh, but at the same time, we've, we've discussed the fact that we have created a lot of financial flexibility for next year. So why not take a look at what uh, might be out there right now in the deadline that uh, might be able to give us an early jump start on our winner and uh, we we looked at four or five players and had a lot of discussions and Matt Kemp was the guy our scouts really liked he's you know 31 years old he's still right in the prime and uh, he fits a need for us uh, you know is a right handed power and he can play left field and that was something that we were looking at this winter so you know we've we've got a long list of things that we're going to be looking to do this winter for sure. But uh, but I think this gives us a, a, a real good jump start, and it, it actually followed our plan as well because we didn't have to give up any of our young players to do it. And uh, and I think financially, um, it puts us in a in a pretty good position because of the uh, uh, the fact that uh, we moved Oliveira in this deal, and uh, we got a lot of offset coming back from San Diego. So it's a good deal all around for us. I think. Yeah, congratulations. You get a you get a bona fide major league slugger for a guy who hasn't proven anything yet in the big leagues and as to whether or not he will be able to play in the big leagues and as it turned out the Padres immediately uh, designated for assignment Mr. Oliveira but you said that some uh, or at least in the release that there was some cash coming back from San Diego to help offset Kemp's salary so that's a win win isn't it yeah it, it is I mean obviously we're you know we're guarding the dollars there is we said earlier that uh, we're going to there's a number of things that we're going to be attempting to do this winter as we go forward and uh, I, I think in looking at it that uh, you know San Diego had had tried to make a run at the roses last year they you know they 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 were absorbed all of Kemp's salary going forward and uh, I think in their in they're looking at it sort of like we did two years ago they're saying look it, it wasn't working um, and so we're going to move offset some money and uh, you know for us we're we're sort of turning that corner and we're starting to if you will put the needle back up. So now you have a very crowded outfield situation at the big league level with quality major league talent already here. How do you expect Brian Snitker to try to work that jigsaw puzzle. Well I, I you know look when you look at uh, I mean Nick in, in right field is uh, you know has been solid again for us this year and uh, we've got NCRD with Malix out uh, and you'll play. Um, Matt Kemp in left field and I think that's uh, you know that's the way it'll go I mean obviously we've got a lot of versatility here which is uh, is important Jace is a guy that uh, you know since he's come back up I mean we know he can play second base but I think he's added to his you know his attraction to us because he can move around and play a variety of positions but I, I think at the end of it when you look at it if you looked at said what's our starting outfield it would be Kemp NCRD and Marquez. And now you've got a little more offensive balance too. You're not so left-handed heavy, which has at times really been apparent when you face the real tough lefties in the league. Well, it, it is, and uh, I think that that's uh, that's something we're looking for. Come on, get Look out! Look at that shot by Wrecker. That one's off the fence. He's got a double, and the Braves are trying to give this big crowd at home a finish. NCRT scores. Braves get two of those four runs back in the eighth themselves. It's a 9-5 game. That's the second time Anthony Wrecker's come close to hitting his first home run as a Brave. And it's been to right center. He's been driving the ball well and he's doing a great job behind the plate, John. Yeah, it was a good get for us. Uh, you know, we, we we were looking for, for catching. You're always looking at that uh, sort of that triple-A level when Flowers was hurt. We had, I think, uh, two or three weeks before we picked up uh, Wrecker. We liked him in the past. And, you know, look, it's, uh, it's not surprising. You get an opportunity to play up here, doing a nice job for us. Deadlines 4 o'clock Eastern Time on Monday. As you said, the Braves have been pretty busy already. Do you anticipate any more moves coming up in the next 36 hours? Or well, so? we, you know, I, I, we don't sleep with this thing. I mean, yeah. this is a this is a time that you you have to be as active as you can. Um, I, I, I think again, uh, for us, uh, we'll continue to look both ways. If there's something that we feel can 
continue to add cachet into that uh, young player pool that we have uh, down below. Um, you know, we'll, we'll take a look at that. And if there's something that we think presents itself that might uh, be a part of our future going forward, um, you know, we'll do that. And, uh, you know, look, it's it, it's nice to look back as we analyze these trades. And, you know, you look at a Melanson going uh, to Washington, you look at the, the haul that uh, Pittsburgh got back coming yeah. in. I mean, they got two really nice players. and. But Washington's in a different position. They're they're out there going for it. That's where everybody wants to be. I've been there before. I understand it, and uh, and I think that you know that's the one thing when we get to that point with uh, with what we've been able to do over the past two years with our trades and with the drafts and with this new inter the, the, the recent international um, uh, signing period that we've had. We've really we've got a lot of a lot of young players and a lot of players talk a lot of people talk to us about. I was like our young players. I'm sorry, John. I was, I was going to say when the trade for Demerit was announced up in when we were up in Minnesota, I, I think that deal really lifted everybody's spirits. And the, the reason for that was we all know the Braves have been acquiring pitching. It's the currency. I know you say you got to have 10 to have two, and I, I agree with you 100 percent. But to add a former number one pick for two players that were frankly reclamation projects, You've kind of done the same thing with Hector Oliveira. Look, we all know about the off-field difficulties. It was pretty apparent it was going to be a tough road for him to play here again. To be able to move that situation out of Atlanta, get that contract removed, and get a player who you think can be productive for for uh, the next three years or so. I mean, are, are you guys all related to Houdini somehow? <laughs> some way? I mean, how does this yeah, happen? This, this is very exciting. Yeah, each of the last two. Well, you know, and it's uh, and, and look, uh, hats off, uh, Johnny. Uh, Capalel has been doing a, a great job. I mean, our staff, our scouts, we've got a lot of people, you know, that are working at this. But, uh, you know, it, it, it's really been that day from day one. And, and a lot of it was the painful part of the creativity we did in offsetting some of the money we had early on in the game. I don't think anybody, you know, really paid attention to it because it's painful when you have to offload and good players and to get rid of bad contracts and and the like and uh, this is you know this is sort of what where we're at right now but I think as we go forward deals like this and I, I think you make a great point chip on the bats you know it, it's like pulling teeth to get anybody to trade any hitters I mean we have tried in every deal we have if we could add a feature guy as a bat we looked in the draft this year is there that guy that's out there uh, I had some people call me today Ian Anderson threw down uh, our number one pick uh, the third overall uh, pitched down in Gulf Coast League, and I had three or four people call said, boy, this guy's got number one written all over him. He's a good-looking kid, and uh, but he was the best out there. And, you know, so I, I think uh, we, we, we got a lot of bats in the uh, internationally. I think uh, we had, what, 16, 18 um, offensive players that we signed there. We just, you know, unfortunately haven't been able to really pull that trigger in the trades. And, you know, we felt, you know, I think going in that, um, you know, we were going to have to trade pitching for the bats. And fortunately, we didn't have to trade to that young pitching, at least to this point, uh, to add a guy that we think, um, you know, with 23 home runs, it's more than anybody we got on this club. Well, congratulations on a big day. I don't know how you're doing it. I don't think anybody <laughs> knows how you're doing it. Just keep doing it. All right. <laughs> we got it. Thanks, guys. Thank you.